Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. Thank you for joining us. We've just spent the last two-ish weeks uh, in Paris, in Bonjour. France. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Bienvenue. <laughs> it's a lot better than the last time I did it. Thank you guys for joining us. We spent a lot of time in France. Just so mm -hmm. happens a little sporting event. Very popular. Maybe you might have heard of it. The Olympics. <laughs> um, so we timed France to be during the Olympics. So yeah. obviously a classic example of us trying to have some event um, be part of our homeschool. Mm -hmm. um, we did, it wasn't an event that we went to like we did in Scotland or um, going to a food truck. This was more of a digital event. Yeah. But it was a huge piece of An what event, we did this week. nonetheless. Yes. And that's the way that we planned this whole yep. time trekking around the world. So when you go to do this, if you want to do this with your mm -hmm. family, with your kiddos, you know, look and see what's going to happen throughout the year and, you know, try to time it. I mean, maybe if this is a, in a couple of years from now, you're going to want to time it. Where's the, where's the winter taking place in? I know the next, the next summer is in LA, but I don't remember where the winter is. Is it going to be back in... I don't remember. We'll, well, put, we'll put it in the show notes. Below. Wherever it's going to be. I mean, you know, you can time it for something like that, yeah. which it could be really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Just there was so much coverage about it. I think what was great about the Olympics, especially this Olympics, is that Paris was such a character. Yeah. It, it was it was it's a, a main piece. You know, they were they were doing you know doing volleyball matches in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, and they did equestrian at Versailles. And so so. It really, it wasn't just like, oh, it happens to be in this country. It was like really showcased a yeah. lot about the country, Absolutely. which made this a really fun time for us. So. Absolutely. So let's get into the books. Ariel, tell me about a handsome, devilishly handsome <laughs> young snail named Escargo. He's a cheeky French snail. Cheeky French snail. Yeah, so Escargot is a fantastic book. It's about this little snail who talks in first person. And um, you, I think it's like required that you read it with your best or maybe it's your worst French accent. Your worst French accent. I try my best. I really do because my kids love if I try an accent. So I apologize if you're, you're French speaking. I'm sorry. Um, but I try. I try to make a, I try to say it right. Whatever. No, I'm not reading it. <laughs> I'm not reading it. We'll lose all the French. I, <laughs> all yeah, I'm trail. sorry. But anyway, he is a cheeky French snail, and he, he his goal is to get a salad with a light vinaigrette and no tom no, carrots. no carrots. No carrots. He hates carrots. Um, They're too hard and crunchy. He's super sweet, and he asks the kids to interact with the book, mm -hmm. like to you know help blow him kisses and just different stuff. So there's this book, and then there's a book for escargot where... He learns how to make escargot. <laughs> and so that was a little bit of a problem. And a little love for escargot. Love escargot. Es escargot and the search for spring. These are all just adorable. Um, so we got all of them. I mean, if you're just going to get one, I, I would say don't skip the the, the first two. The OGs. The, yeah, the escargot and then the book for escargot. These are super cute. Do them both. Uh, you don't have to go into all the escargots if you don't want to. Our girls... <laughs> absolutely love escargot and it was funny because we went to visit my parents um they live near the beach mm -hmm. and they uh they, one day the girls just shouted mom 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 escargot is here and there was this beautiful snail in the yard and they like built him a house and it was it was adorable at one point they built him a house and they built like they built ramps for him this poor little snail and they'd done all these things for him at one point they, they had to come back inside and they were playing back inside and he, and fl he fled <laughs> no 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 before that he they, they put him on the windowsill and they opened the window so that it was the screen was there and they so that they could still play with this cargo even though it started raining and they had to come inside they put him <laughs> on the window so they could all still play together and yes in the morning he had fled um but, but somehow like, he came back they no like him. two days later my dad found him in the yard and the get the kids lost their minds so anyways <laughs> these are super cute um isn't just for the little ones my eight-year-old absolutely she was like do not read escargot me she could remember it from the last time we'd done it this this book made a big impression on her i remember that yeah i think that the build your library book is linnea and monet's garden which our older daughter just didn't connect with at all it was just i don't know this was the book when mm -hmm. we said we were going to study france she was mom we can't do it if you don't get escargot we have to have escargot <laughs> so this is the book we highly recommend that you do um enjoy it um, maybe do some snail related art if you have time or Food related. I, well, I mean, that wouldn't be our choice, but go for it if you want to do that. Actually, our girls were asking us today, have you ever eaten escargot? So it was kind of funny. But anyway. Tastes like chicken. 
These are super cute. Don't miss them. Don't don't Absolutely. miss Escargo because it's perfect. So. so let's talk a little bit about a couple chapter books. Yeah. Um, first one, Greetings from Somewhere, The Mystery of the Stolen Painting. So we're continuing with Ethan and Ella around mm -hmm. the world as they're solving mysteries. Homeschooling students. Yeah. These books are just perfect for your kindergarten, first grade um, age. I, I think they're just... Maybe not kindergarten, but first grade. Our our daughter, who's just going to enter kindergarten in a few months. She loves it. She loves it. She totally, she understands it for the most part. She's interested. There's enough pictures. Um, they're they're just fun. They don't take too long. I think we read them in like two sittings. You, you started it and then I finished it. Like you did you, the right. first half. <laughs> it was I funny because we'd both read it before. So yeah, yeah it was funny. I got home they're, and go, okay, we're going to finish it. They're light popcorn reads. Not a lot of investment with respect mm -hmm. to like difficulty of reading. Um, something you can probably in a long sitting uh, get through the whole thing in one shot. Yeah, if your kiddo um, will sit for it. Probably more realistic. Um, two to three sittings, easily get through it. It's not a big deal. If you have an older learner, this would be great for them to read to themselves because yeah. it's it's at a good, I mean, the you know it's got nice big text. The words aren't super complex. Um, so it could be fun to either read to a younger or have an older read for themselves. Absolutely. Our daughter, though. Giada de Laurentiis. Recipe for Adventure, Paris. Paris. So um, we we loved these books. We read these the first time around, and it's the, these two siblings. So I don't know, yeah, Alfie, Alfie and Amelia, and their great aunt comes to visit, and all of a sudden, through her food, they get transported to different places around the world, which is awesome. cool. And so th these are just stories all about about food and kids together. They're they're great. And there's some recipe cards as well to try. Yeah, so that's fun because it gets more into the food in France. Food. It's Fabulous. a little bit more of a difficult read than the Greetings from Somewhere. A little bit more, yeah, we, a little longer as well. We didn't read this to our five-year-old. This was for our eight-year-old. Although when we did this the last time around, I think our older daughter was six. And six. we read this to yeah. her then and she was good with it at that age. So you can check it out from the library and mm -hmm. see if it might be up your alley. But if you if your kids aren't into Greetings from Somewhere and you still want a chapter book, you could lean a little bit more into food and maybe go with this one. Absolutely. So, uh, so getting into a little bit of... of uh, non-fiction books. We'll talk a little bit because it was the Olympics. I witnessed the Olympics. Yep. Nice book to have uh, laying around looking at pictures and stuff, especially if you're yep. watching some slow NBC primetime coverage. <laughs> you can actually have some few books out, so definitely take a look at that. Yeah, so if you if you are going to do any Olympic study at any time, this yep. would be great. And you can also look up the Olympic Museum in Lausanne, Switzerland. So mm -hmm. we actually went there and we had pictures from it that we were able to, mm -hmm. you know, show our kids. So that's really kind of fun, but this will go in through all the sports and you can get this at your library. Um, another couple of things, uh, very famous art, and we'll, we have a couple of recommendations here, um, but talking a little bit Monet, if you're looking to get some artists and impressionism as well so mm -hmm. as you know we are big uh, eyewitness book collectors so these were pulled off the shelf tossed out there you can use them lose them whatever mm -hmm. just make sure they wind up on the shelf there's when you're a, done with the week there's a good yeah. book too i'll look it up there's a scholastic book we used last time getting to know artists and monet was mm -hmm. one of them that you can use um i think monet was one of them and that would be great too we really ran out of time for a lot of books because of watching so much olympic yeah. coverage um but i'll try to put that in there for those of you who want to do more monet that's at kid appropriate level but yeah you can get all these eyewitness books at your library and at least start the discussion if you have the ability to find this next book or if you have kind of big coffee table books a lot of people do um, get those we have a beautiful book on the musee d'orsay um, another thing to just kind of lean out this is not something we're like reading to our kids or whatnot no. this is really just something to look through see if they can find certain paintings that they might recognize really just something to browse so if you have these types of tabletop books yep. Great thing to have. Your library will definitely have them. Um, we have one more on the Louvre. One more of the Louvre. We you... we just like to leave these out at like breakfast time. Yeah. <laughs> and the kids can browse around, and if they find a painting that they're interested in or a piece of another piece of art, then we can talk about it. And um, especially yeah. if you do kind of a study that weekend, if you want to pick out a certain uh, famous piece of art or something of that nature, you may have that showcased in one of these books. It's a really nice thing to do. It's a good jumping off point if you want to do some sort of an art project. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I always appreciated about Blossom and Root early years when they would study art, um, they would say like, okay, study Starry Night. 
and they and they would just say to create a piece of art that used the same colors or maybe yeah. used the same medium or whatever. It didn't have to be like trying to copy that thing. So that could be really fun if you can find a piece of art in here that you might mm -hmm. be interested in that's all in reds and blacks and golds. You can use those same colors and have your kids do a piece of art about whatever they want to do. Or, you know. So yeah, use as a good jumping off point. I, I feel like there is so much with France that you could... Well, There's art, many things to choose. Uh, you could, I mean, we could study yeah. France for years. Yeah. So trying to do two weeks on it felt like I don't even know how we'd do that justice. Well, and the, and the funny thing about art, you always think about the Louvre or some impressionist paintings, and whatnot. But art can go back tens of thousands of years in France mm -hmm. with the Lascaux caves. So you can yes. go to a lot of cave Neolithic uh, cave art as well. So mm -hmm. you can really, you know, span the artistic um, time periods. Uh, it, with France, it's, it's such a nice uh, place to go where you just have that huge But I breath. think that, that it gets overwhelming. So mm -hmm. I, so the advice that I would say, just don't try to do it all. There's no, no way that you can study all of France or even no. a minuscule part of it in a week or two. So don't try. Pick a couple things that you think that your kids might be interested mm -hmm. in. Maybe you've got a kid who's going to be super interested in castles. There's beautiful yeah. castles in the Loire Valley and Carcassonne in the south. Um, maybe your kids are going to be really interested in yeah, prehistoric art or the Louvre or Paris or food mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, just like lean into whatever it is that they're really there's, interested in. There's a lot in. here. You really have to... One of the things that we did in, in the Around the World journey um, before is that we kind of focused on one or two things and really just keep it focused on those things. Because you're right, you have this paralysis by choice um, in some countries that are just, um, it's an embarrassment of riches uh, it, that you can choose from. And picking one or two things can help you narrow what mm -hmm. you do that week and allow you to be a lot more focused and give that child something to take away. This week was really dominated by the Olympics for us. So it was really yeah. just reading some fun books and really just Olympics. And then all of the sites in Paris that the kids were seeing on mm -hmm. the TV where the athletes were, were you know, competing and being able to showcase that. They, you know, the Louvre was constantly shown and you know, sweeping shots of the city. And so we'd have these books laid out and talk a little bit about that. But from the main point, it was, you're right. Like there's mm -hmm. so many things to choose from. Pick, pick a couple things. We had the Olympics. You know, next year when you're doing this right now, obviously the Olympics aren't going to happen. So you got to pick something. So try to find something that really connects with. Now, moving on yeah. to our biome, France has a lot of forests. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and so we went ahead and, and, and did that. But the f full disclosure, mm -hmm. we had one kid who was gone this week. She uh, went, so both we, kids were gone for an entire week. So this, we had a kind of a breakup of a two-week period. We were going to study forests. We never got to it, which is okay. At, well, one of our kids went camping in the forest all week. So yeah. it felt like, yeah. but these are the books that we pulled. So we're, of course, going to get back to this biome yep. in other countries. So this is what we were going to lean into tree. Trees. I witnessed tree. And then we have this wonderful book. This book is great. This is Our World in Pictures, a Trees, Leaves, Flowers, and Seeds. Um, and it's great because it just has these beautiful pictures. Yep. Um, what our plan was <laughs> is we were going to start looking at um, different aspects of trees that were in our area, in our mm -hmm. forests. And then we were going to go and visit, uh, we were going to go on a hike because we, we have lots of forests here in, in uh, Western Washington. So that was our plan. That's kind we of were, a funny thing is uh, we didn't have kids, so we went on a hike. We did. <laughs> we saw a lot of forests. We did. Um, yeah. But that was our plan is we were going to research what was around in our area and then go out and do that. But as it turned out, one of our daughters did spend a week in the forest, so maybe it kind of counted um but yeah we wanted to be transparent that we didn't actually get to the biome this week sorry such as oh. life this um, didn't happen there's too much uh swimming and diving and running and things that we watched instead way, way more important things um games yes. puzzles in our in our earlier videos we talked about bringing games and puzzles into mm -hmm. the discussion um, into what we do and one of the ones classic game we've owned it for this almost is, 20 this was years. the OG this was the first one this, yep. is, this was our gateway game it got us into all of our games Rio Grande game classic old school cover almost collectible level <laughs> yeah. if it weren't so beat up on the outside yeah so Carcassonne it's a famous walled city in southern France that is still preserved and it's on our bucket list someday to go to Carcassonne and play this play this game in Carcassonne well, yeah we'll be with all the other uh, goofy people yeah we're, so, we're so nerdy but it's, it's a tile Tile lane game. It's a classic tile lane game. So you'll have all these tiles and you're matching up uh, uh, spaces and you're building this huge grid You're array. building little cities. So uh, this is a game that our younger daughter started playing at four. Little meeples. Um, 
Yeah, this is where Meeple started, if you've heard the term Meeples. Yep. Um, so yeah, our daughter started playing this at four. The way that you play it with, the, you'll see some people have like my first Carcassonne. I don't think you really need to buy that. I think that's kind of a waste. You can go with the regular Carcassonne, um, just to play without farmers. Yep. So if you want to play this with a younger learner uh, without farmers, you'll be good to go. Uh, oh, and take our advice and have everybody draw the tile right after they play. Draw their next tile yes. so that they can be thinking about it while everyone else plays. Because if you draw and then you have to play right away, then some folks get like analysis paralysis. So we've played a lot of games at Carcassonne. The minute you play, draw. <laughs> right. You, but but yes, if you play without farmers, you can play with very young kids. You could maybe maybe play younger than four or they could play on a team because you're really just, just matching. matching. It's a matching game. So, anyway. Yep. Um, yep. Moving on, we'll, we'll stay with puzzles. Yeah, let's stay with puzzles and games because we, one of the things that there was so much Olympic coverage, we decided to do some puzzles while we were watching. So this is a silhouette puzzle from Ravensburger. It is in the shape of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, so this is just an example of something that you could do, but this super is cool. A, a super cool. It's got some a, a scenes of Paris in it. Some of you may have seen puzzles like this, the big 3D puzzle. We've been holding onto this puzzle for a long time and waiting for a long, now we had to help our, our young her daughter could not do this. Our older one was able to help us with it, but show the back, show the back. I mean, this is like classic. This is when did this come out? Like mid '90s, I think. I don't know. We thrifted this at so some point. We, but when we go to thrift stores, if we find these puzzles, even if they're not complete, it's good enough. Most of the time, you'll be missing maybe one or two pieces. But the 3D this puzzles. This one was are awesome. intact, which was great. Yeah. I did get burned one time when I bought a 3D puzzle, and it was actually filled with adult magazines <laughs> from the thrift store. I didn't open it before I left, and that was the last time that I have not opened a puzzle before I left the thrift store. Great find, Ariel. I should have known that it was too heavy, because these are foam puzzles. Um, <laughs> that was a moment where, you know, you just know, like, somebody's mom cleaned out their, like, bedroom I, when they went away to college, and I this was under the story. bed, and they just, like, donated it and didn't think about it. Oh, my gosh. Inside this box. I went to put it away and it was like, ooh. anyways. Speaking of art, if you can um, find puzzles, do some puzzles while you had watch a little bit of uh, color by numbers, especially uh, the little one is doing a lot of number work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went ahead and got a nice paint by numbers. You can always find these, um, whatever area you are, just search in Google. Um, the famous thing, so Mona Lisa uh, color by numbers. Mm -hmm. Go to sh images and then you'll see them all there. You just right click and start printing. That's one of the things we did one morning there. That's really fun. That was a lot of fun. And then moving on to food, which mm -hmm. was a big thing. So it's a little bit long. We've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, we had our Yum Box that we saved from France. Yep, they, we got it a couple months ago and yep. we checked the expirations on everything and then saved it. One of the things we like, we got to taste all kinds of delicious, delicious <laughs> snacks. Um, but one of the things that's cool is they have these recipes in the back. So yep. this was a recipe for chocolate truffles that we made. We made. Um, so we made those. We also made uh, crepes, crepes with Nutella because that's the way we had them when we were in Paris. Croissants you did as well from Trader Joe's. Well, those were chocolate croissants. Yeah, I didn't actually make them. I just, I just, Proof to them and ate them. They were delicious. But that's fine. I mean, you don't have to make anything from scratch. You that's can go to true. Trader Joe's, get the thing, you know, it's frozen. You just let it thaw and go ahead and bake it off. They, they were delish. They were awesome. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of nice to have those fresh uh, chocolate croissants. And then and then the truffles from this one and the crepes are really easy. So I'll find a, a, an easy truffle recipe that mm -hmm. I can post for you. But you're basically making gan a ganache and then chilling it um, and rolling it in cocoa powder. It's Absolutely. very easy. Um, so, yeah, we just, we leaned into all the French sweets. Oh, and we did have, um, we had baguette sandwiches one mm -hmm. day. We got some baguettes from a local bakery yep. and then we made some sandwiches up for a picnic. That was really nice. And then yeah, we also, movie-wise, we watched a uh, classic fi uh, French film, Ratatouille. Um, I don't know. We felt like we had to watch Ratatouille. We had to. And so that was really good. The girls our, watched that. Yeah. Our younger daughter absolutely loves Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really fun. So I think it, it was kind of a jam-packed week. I felt like we didn't do a lot. It was split up. It was, two, we it was two weeks kind of spread across almost three. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and really the spine of it was the Olympics. So that was really kind of the defining piece of this whole thing. Yeah. But, but you know, now that I'm looking at all the things surrounding me, we actually did more than I realized. Yeah. Um, in this couple of weeks, I feel like I said you could study France. I could study mm -hmm. France forever, but um, this was a good a good start to things. So hopefully this was helpful. And um, obviously the Olympics might not be you know the right thing for you when you study France, but whatever country it's in when you know you're studying, if you're in an Olympic year, definitely take advantage of that and Absolutely. move that country to to coincide. 
because I think it, it really made this a much more meaningful study this week. Absolutely. So. so the next one will be in four years in LA. You may just choose to study LA. There's so much there. It's a country in and of itself. Right. So yeah. if you're watching this in four years, <laughs> thanks, for sti- thanks for sticking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I think we're going to be going to um, Central Africa. We're going to be doing rainforest and things next. So I'm excited to get into the, the jungle and, and learn all about the cool animals and things in jo- that area. Jollof rice. Oh, yeah, we had this great Nigerian Nigerian. recipe last time. Yeah, so I think we're going to do like Western... West Africa. Western Central, because we already did Northern. We did all that Sahara, the the, the Northern Desert um, state. So I think we want to really get into all of the... The bend. The bend there. I don't know what that's called exactly. Where where, (laughs) uh, all the... Where there's you know different different biome we can mm-hmm. study and yep. different animals. I think that's what we're going to get into next. Uh, speaking of which, I got to get around to planning that. Um, so get, get to work, Ariel. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>